Hey guys, welcome back to the WK Space Agency. I'm Wandering Kid. So, in our last episode, Thor's Hammer II managed to get himself up to orbit, but he needs some fuel and things of that nature. So, to perform this task, I've built Hugin. Hugin is an interesting little design. Let's start with what it does. Okay, right up on top, we've got a docking port. A T-800 fuel tank and a couple of thruster packs. This entire piece is simply to refuel Thor's hammer. On the bottom of that, zoom in here, we have a ejection component. So once we're done with it, we're gonna just fire that off towards atmosphere and say goodbye. Underneath that, we have another outward facing docking port that's hooked to an advanced inline stabilizer what I'm going to do is after we get done with the refuel and we do an injection push I'm going to dump the rest of this rocket but I'm going to leave the advanced inline stabilizer behind hooked on via the docking port this is to hopefully give us some ability to control Thor's hammer because it's um, a brick beneath that we have the rest of our rocket. We have a Octo, an RCS fuel tank, another T-800, and a T-45. This is going to be our basically our pushing stage. Uh, this should help us with the injection towards moon. Hopefully it will help us with all necessary items afterwards. There's roughly 1400 Delta V up there. That should be enough just for the braking portion at which point we can take over with Thor's hammer itself. We'll see how this goes. Beneath that is a lifter. We have a skipper on the bottom, which gives us plenty of TWR. I am on carbon. Picked up to one of our Jumbo 64s. Attached to the, wrapped around that, we have three S1 SRB KD25Ks. We come in at 28 of 30 parts. We have 118 out of 140 tons. There is one thing I forgot to do for this. And that's stick a cur on it. There, now it has cur. There is one other thing I forgot to do for this and that was give our Octo some solar panels. Uh, we have a parts problem. Hmm. Now I have two sets of three RCS thruster blocks on this. They're offset from each other depending on who we're looking at. That was for docking control, which I'll want. So where can I strip off a part or two? You ever have that feeling you knew you forgot something? Okay, back with Kerr. See ya. Stick on two solar panels and hope we don't get stuck in the dark because we don't get a lot of power. Electric charge, 10. You know, we don't get a recharge once we dock. I might be better off just sticking two batteries under this. There, that gives us 400 electric charge, which should be more than enough to make sure we can dock up with uh, Thor's hammer. We'll do it that way. So, let's get Hugo and airborne. It's going to cost us 35 266 to send this up. We're not getting anything back. So it's going to cost us 35k to go up, refuel Thor's hammer, which already cost us a good bundle, and get this thing shipped to moon. So far, I have probably going to lose most of my money on this Mooner Station contract. Oh, one other thing. 
Yes, my octo is correctly faced. Now, as long as everything goes as planned. So before we launch Hugin, I want to have Thor's Hammer 2 at least come close to the launching area. So we're going to swing Thor's Hammer 2 around. All right. Uh, he's a little in front of where I was hoping to be, but that's okay. So let's get this thing up, up into the... All right, so let's go dock this thing. She's a bit wobbly. Separate rounds in the future on this would be a good idea. As would more supports. Well, here's the problem with wobbly rockets. You may notice that the front of this rocket is wobbling all over the place while I'm trying to turn this thing. And this is because I'm torquing the heck out of it from up here. It's making this front wobble heavily. And this is why you start your ships. Since I ran out of parts, kind of having to make do with what I got best I can. No, that should hold on. Part of the problem is the fact that my reaction wheel is on the other side of... Well, no, it's not on the other side of a docking port. I'm not sure why it's having such an issue, but it is. Either way. All right, well, now we have to go correct our burn. Now, oh, 0.0, .0. that's good enough for me. All right, so now we're closing in around. All right. My periapsis is... Okay, everything's all screwy. So his periapsis is 71002, with an apo of 86869. My periapsis is 725, with an apoapsis of 73. What we're going to do is we're going to try and move my couple of things around here. I'm going to add a maneuver in underneath his apoapsis. Try and bring my periapsis underneath his. Done right, I'll stay just in space. I may need to boost the target's orbit up a hair. That's not going to flow. All right, so I'm going to do something first. We're going to switch over to Thor's hammer. In about a year, we'll get him to roll prograde. Now, one of the things you may have noticed when I did that, my tanks are unbalanced because I came up here to check to see if I had fuel transfer abilities, if I had to upgrade something. So this is going to be a incredibly gentle burn. To make sure that that happens, I'm going to lower my thrust. Let's make it... Oh, come on. Made them even. Six. Six. Just to make sure I can't get out of control. And what we're going to do is we're just going to pick up our periapsis a hair. Now, the ship definitely wants to lean. That's enough. That, shh, well, I want another 500 f meters if I can. But I'm fighting the SAS on this. It really wants to hang right. right. If I can get that to 72, it gives me a little bit of vig for Hugin to get in underneath him. There, I got my periapsis up to 72k. Let's go back to Hugin. Now maybe this has a fighting chance. 
I'm on a timeline here. So when I get to his apoapsis, I want to swing my periapsis near his. It's coming in far too low. Can't see my periapsis over there now. 69. 75. And now we'll just use our radials. Try and line things up. Actually, I'm going to have to unset target for a second. 7527. That'll be fine. So we'll come around on that. We'll get these better lined up. And I'll get in underneath them so I can eventually orbit to him. My time limit is my electric charge. Okay, so now we're underneath him in all counts. He's 280 meters away kilometers away, excuse me. Let's take a look at... Here we get the 14.2 kilometers in four orbits. I think we're going to run out of juice before then. Alright, so just past my apoapsis, which is 29 minutes. My periapsis is... Well, his periapsis is 12 minutes away. 337, 12 minutes later, is... 15. So I just passed my periapsis. My apoapsis is 15 minutes out. I had just passed it. I figure about 14 minutes. 337, I'm using 24 per orbit. No, I'm using 24 per half orbit, 48 per orbit. 120, once, uh, 50, 100, 200. That leaves me 112 roughly when we're coming into range of each other. I might be out of juice by then. How close do I get along the way? 91, 107, 33 kilometers. I'd like to start my approach then. This is really when I prefer to start my approach, but I don't know if I have enough juice to last up here for an hour and 45 minutes. Let's play it by ear. Third orbit. Just watch, because I got nowhere else I need to be. Now, one of the things I'm really hoping for when we do this is our rendezvous is going to be on the light side. So this was the third orbit rendezvous. I am right. We should have about 120 electric, or 110 electric charge, somewhere in there. I'm going to go around one more time, get as close as possible. We are, of course, going to do this on the night side. Why not? All right, so we don't do much yet. Let's swing this over. Negate our relative speeds. Once I've done that, I'm going to retest to see if we can get closer on the light side. Fortunately, I think this is going to drop my periapsis into atmosphere, so I don't know if that's going to work out as planned. This thing is tough to control. Okay, now we're going to burn towards target. Our periapsis is dangerously low. All right, I've decided this ship is too uncontrollable. I'm dumping the rear tank. Let's Let's get this straightened out. Kill relative speed. There's a 
over. Burn towards target. Come on, I can't see the damn distance right now. Stupid nap ball. Seriously. There we go. All right, we're only 500 meters away. And finally line things up. With how wobbly this is, you can tell how interesting this is going to get. All right. That's enough of that. Now, it's time to line up with Thor's hammer. Alright, so, I'm going to control from there. Oh, because I'm on the wrong... Thank you. There we go. Now, let's turn on RCS. Power's a problem. We're on a... Time limit here. I need to watch my SAS use. I only have it on when I'm actually doing a maneuver. And I'm not sure what side that docking port's on until I get closer. Let's see Thor's hammer. Hang on, go to Thor. Alright, shut off Thor's hammer. We're gonna spin the docking port around for our ship. Alright, well, it's got a fighting chance. All right, so we can see the docking port. Set that as the target. See, so what I'm doing is, is I'm shutting off SAS and I'm doing this basically by hand so that it can keep some charge on the ship. Yes, yeah, so you have to constantly move the camera around a little bit as you do this. How does it look? Um, no, 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 stop, stop. Oh, we just passed into the dark side. Now I can't see. Yeah, now I can't even see what the heck I'm doing. And I'm just burning all over the place. Just let that swing over. Of course, hammer is floating away from me. How lovely. And now I'm going to burn through charge, just trying to get this straightened back out. And I hope this works.
Oh my god, I lucked it. I lucked it together. Oh, wow. I was close enough that I just aimed it at the port and it was able to get it in. So, let's refuel. And once these get some charge in them, we'll worry about things. Uh, let's zoom out a bit. Wow, I don't believe I lucked that together. Oof. So it takes this unit about two-thirds of a day to charge. But that's enough for us. So we're going to control from there. We're going to undock. Now, RCS on. Let's back off a of hair. Okay. Um, spin so I know what direction I'm heading. So it's here. Oh, turn RCS off. Oh, let's see if I got my staging correct. I think I do. See ya! Aha! It worked. Alright, now we have to get this sucker redocked. And after our last adventure, this should be fun. Alright. Set that as target. Get ourselves turned around. Yep. For some reason I'm floating off. Let's stop that. And I am all turned around. I hate docking sometimes. What am I doing wrong? Oh, almost got it. All right, we are attached again. Ooh. Now where do I want to control this bird from? Now if I control from here, thinks this is upright to the horizon. Oh no, that's significantly confused. It thinks this is level to horizon. That is particularly unhelpful. The control from there, at least it knows it's in the wrong direction. Let's find its prograde. Okay, at least I've got prograde and retrograde accurate this way. Okay, well, in space, who cares about horizons, right? Wow, I really docked this thing off-center. What a mess. Let's lock the stages so I don't accidentally do something. And let's figure out our moon burn. This push stage, according to Kerr, it's not going to have enough fuel to get me where I need to be. Oh, there's one other thing I want to do. I want to cut these side tanks back off. That's okay. At least it'll help with the injection. And then maybe from there I can figure out what the heck is going on with the rest of this thing. So Hugen has performed his tasks. We're going to let Hugen go. Unlock staging. Thank you, Hugen. And now it's just Thor's hammer. 
let's open up our whoops. Let's see if we can't figure out what the heck we're trying to do here. Okay, so we know that's not right. That is horribly not right. There we go. Not sure. I think it might have been trying to control from the root node. That's okay. And now we have to finish off the rest of our burn, which is all sorts of screwed up. So we're just going to aim in the right direction, close that, go to map, and burn. Actually, I just remembered I had played with thrust limiters. Bring them both back up to 100. Now, obviously, my burn is all sorts of screwy. But that reaction wheel is working very nicely. Whoops, a little too much. But our injector did its job. We only needed a little bit extra. Yep. To uh, get ourselves into a moon intercept and we'll definitely have enough to break and land. So, Thor's Hammer 2 is on its way to moon. We're going to disable the torque and disable that. Oops, actually, we're going to toggle the torque again. We're going to make sure we keep our solar panels in the general direction of the sun here. So while it's in transit, it should stay sunlit. Keep our drone charged. Okay, in five hours, it gets to Moon's SOI. Even with all the flights we've got going, including our satellites and things like that, Thor's hammer is going to be the first thing up for what we're doing. Minimus takes forever to get to. So that's what we're going to do. First thing up is it's got an SOI change. All right, and so we'll be in Moon's SOI momentarily. Yep. That's pretty nice. Now, that's also on the light side of the moon. Uh, excuse me, flight engineer. Thank you. That's not a horrible place. So what we're going to do, we're going to try and land all in one shot. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to bring my periapsis down, so I'm doing a skim. That looks roughly safe. I'd like to get that a little more on the equatorial plane. Yep. Periapsis comes in at six. Throw that down just another hair. It's a little too much. All right, 6.1 will be fine. So the intent is to come in break and land in one maneuver with this. We'll see how this goes. Next maneuver will be right here at periapsis. Slow this all the way in. Can't quite see what I want to see. There we go. should get us close and we'll figure it out from there. Okay, we're here. Now that I can get, come in a little closer on this. I want to improve that a bit. There, about like so. Yeah, that looks perfectly right. Okay, so let's get ourselves turned into the right position. It's made a burn time is one minute. We'll start the burn at 30 seconds. Also going to want to spin. So that have an easier time of control. No, 
not liking the looks of those mountains. There's a reason it's called the skim. Slow things down. Yeah, okay, I've got enough altitude. Just gonna wait a second. Now, one of the things you want to do when you're going to come in for a skim like this in a direct to landing, you want to make sure that you've got a lot of thrust on your craft. You don't want to be doing this for over two or three minutes. Because at that point, the gravity of Moon has really affected you, and you're probably falling like a brick at that point. So be careful of that. I see my shadow from up here? No, not easily. All right. Not bad. Okay, so our suicide burn is in 1,000 meters. It'll cost us 82 delta V. I usually kick off my suicide burns about two or three hundred meters above at least, just for sanity. There we go. You're in a controlled landing. Center that off. Landing at 5.0 meters per second, roughly. Slight lateral. Thor's hammer has landed. We are successful. Uh, let's shut off SAS. Now, uh, my contracts. There we go. One completed contract, 181k put in the bank. Got a nice piece of funds out of that. Only cost us roughly the amount that we were putting it up for. But we now have a moon outpost. For what it's worth. I'm not sure what else we can do with this. But we're going to lock this in. Um, now, if I want to change this, we're going to rename vessel. Turn you into a base. There we go. So that'll end this episode of the Space Agency. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.